Hey guys, how's it going? Today, we have a courtesy car from Mercedes-Benz uh, in place of our ML350 because it's getting its routine B service after about 20,000 miles, 22,000 miles, I believe it has on it, in about a year and a half or so, a little less than a year and a half. But, as a courtesy car, we have a brand new 2015 Mercedes-Benz C300 4Matic. I'm going to give a full, full detailed in-depth tour of this car. I'll show the engine and go over most of the features. Obviously it's just a rental car, a uh, courtesy car that we just got, so I'm not fully acquainted with it yet, but I'll try to show you as much as I can. So we'll go ahead and unlock it. Uh, the thing about this car actually is that you don't even need the key to uh, get in the vehicle. See, it's locked, for example. If I keep the key in my pocket, all I have to do is touch the back of the handle and it'll unlock. And by tapping the door here, this part of the handle, it'll lock it. And that works with any door, not just the front ones. And you can see the mirrors will fold in and out depending on that. It's a white exterior, looks like uh, polar white. Mercedes-Benz offers two types of white, uh, Designio Diamond White Metallic, which we have on our ML, you might have seen, or this polar white. Inside we have a silk beige slash black MB Tex. It's very nice inside. The thing about the keyless entry is that usually most cars with keyless entry also have keyless go, but this car still requires you to have a key, so it's kind of pointless to have keyless entry if you have to take the key out of your pocket anyway to start it. Anyway, right now we'll just go ahead and turn on the hazards, as well as the headlights. And uh, I actually will also turn on the rear fog light as well. All four windows are fully automatic, and we'll just go ahead and take a quick walk around of the exterior. Nice, very solid feeling doors, if you, if you can hear that. I'm not sure if the, the microphone picks that up but they're very solid. Mercedes, actually, I don't know if they do it anymore, but they used to purposely add more weight in their doors, so when they closed and opened, they had a much more solid feeling. I'm not sure if they still do that, though. So this new C300 is basically in Mercedes' um, lineup, their second to lowest vehicle. Uh, below this, uh, in the sedans, you have the Mercedes-Benz CLA and its models, the 250 and the 45 AMG. Then you have this C-Class, C300. You have a few different models of the C300. You have uh, C300, C300 4Matic. Then you also have C450, and I believe that there's also C450 4Matic, or it might be 4Matic only. Then of course you have the C63 AMG. Uh, they just released the C63 Coupe a little while ago, the C-Class Coupe in general. They just released it a few months ago. Uh, I don't think it's out on the market yet. Uh, then above the C-Class, you have the E-Class, which is, which used to be Mercedes-Benz middle lineup. Now it's on the upper range of things, although they haven't updated it in a while. Above that, uh, you can count the CLS, because that is a four-door, yet they consider it a coupe, but it is a four-door sedan. Uh, then obviously at the top of the range you have the S-Class. Now what they did with the C-Class is they made it a baby S-Class. That's what Mercedes actually calls it, a baby S-Class, and you can actually very distinctly tell 
by the rear tail lights. They're very similar to the S-Class. Uh, these, these four lights down here are for your uh, rear fog light in case you were wondering what that was. But yeah, it's very, very similar to uh, an S-Class. And obviously, because it's not their lowest model, because they introduced the CLA now, the C-Class is not their lowest model, um, they really have added a lot of nice features, updated the interior, and it makes it look very nice. Now this is a courtesy car, so it doesn't have as... Usually courtesy cars come basically bone stock. This one actually does not. It actually has some cool features, but obviously probably not as most Mercedes-Benz owners would spec it out. Um, if you notice the flashing of the, uh, the light in the front, that's just a trick of the camera that's not actually flashing in real life. Uh, what I really kind of don't like are the wheels. They have a really nice design, however, they're only 17 inch. I, um, obviously, it, 17 inches calls for a much better quality of ride because you have thicker tires on there, but uh, not, not the best choice of rim size for a luxury vehicle. Usually, you would expect a larger rim. Riding on Pirelli tires, though. Let's go ahead and uh, pop the hood. There's a red lever underneath here. So this is a uh, turbocharged inline four cylinder, uh, producing, I'm not really sure on the numbers, I'll put an annotation in there. I actually did a little bit of research before this video, so I'm not completely clueless like I am in many other vehicles. Uh, but yes, it's a turbocharged inline four. Uh, Mercedes has started putting these into their, like, their lowest end cars. There's like this is standard in the CLA, standard in this car. I believe it's also in the GLA. Uh, driving wise, there is a little bit of turbo lag getting off the line, but once you're driving, it's nothing noticeable. It's very quick. Uh, the speed shift transmission, the AMG. Uh, sorry, not speed shift. I forget. I I forget what they call it. But the transmission in this car, I think it's like G-Tronic or something like that. is It's very nice. The problem with Mercedes beforehand used to be their transmissions, and now that they've really stepped up their game in their transmissions, they're really becoming really great drivers' cars. Uh, I talked about the headlamps briefly, but overall, they have a very nice design. I actually think Mercedes-Benz has one of the best headlight designs in the business right now. It used to be Audi, but I mean, if you've seen the new S-Class Coupe with the Swarovski crystals, you know what I mean. The headlights are just amazing. And actually, if you turn off the lights, like I'll just do now real quick, the daytime running lights become a little bit brighter. Maybe if you can notice that now. It's still flashing. Sorry about that. Uh, that's because I'm recording in 60 frames per second. But... We'll go ahead and hop on in.
Okay, that was it revving in comfort mode. Now I'm going to do it in eco mode. Okay, that was eco mode. Now I'm going to rev it in sport mode. That was sport mode. Now I'm going to do it in sport plus mode, which is the highest mode there is. You should notice some more quickness in the revving of the engine, as well as maybe some more exhaust backfires or burbles, uh, as well as maybe a little bit more turbo whine, stuff like that. That's the highest mode there is, most sporty.
Okay, that was that. And 60 mile an hour speedometer, 8,000 RPM tack, red line's about 6,300. Uh, you have your gas right down there, your coolant temperature right down there, your outside temperature, and your clock. Pretty self explanatory. So, once you're inside of the C class, you'll when I got inside. I was pretty shocked. You guys will probably be shocked too if you've been in previous C classes. They have really just upped their game here. Uh, we'll start from, I guess, left to right. We'll just kind of go over through the interior. So you do have, I think this is, I forget the name of this wood. I think it's burl walnut wood trim, but uh, except it's all in lines, if you can see. It's not like natural grain, I think. Here you have your seat adjustment with three person memory. I really like how this upper part of the seat extends. That's this part here. That actually adds a lot more comfort to driving. You have Burmester sound system, which I was really shocked when I first got in. I thought, wow, this actually has Burmester sound system. Um, Upon further investigation, however, it's not the top of the range Burmester sound system. Um, it only produces about 530 watts, um, 13 speakers in this vehicle. Um, now 530 watts is still a lot. I mean, our ML has Harman Kardon, which has about 580 watts of output. Um, but it's nothing compared to like the 1200 watts of uh, of sound that you get in like uh, the Porsches or um, S-Class with the um, with this or other vehicles with even Bang & Olufsen or Bentley if you've heard of the new Bentley Bentayga SUV that's putting out 1800 watts which is just crazy on I don't know what sound system but that's pretty good um, if you guys watch Moto Man in his S63 video I believe he said that these window switches were strangely arousing. They really do feel nice, I do have to say. I really do agree with him. Like, these are just so nice feeling. They have like perfect weight to them. They're real aluminum, don't feel cheap at all. There's like a little cutout for your finger in the back, which is like, it's different from other vehicles the way it bends it's just kind of I don't know yeah I just really have to agree with Motorman on that one they do kind of feel strangely arousing here you have your mirrors your uh, folding in mirrors they fold slightly up as well as in okay here you have your trunk release down there your parking brake what I've noticed is every time you uh, go into park and, and uh, turn the car off it automatically applies the parking brake that's kind of a neat new feature and then uh, when you start driving away it'll automatically um, take it off for example I'm in drive now my foot is off the brake it's still holding it but as soon as I touch the accelerator it'll turn off like I'm touching the accelerator now turned off so that was a uh, that's kind of neat I found uh, your headlight switches, your fog light, your uh, dimmer control for your instruments. Uh, here you have your turn signals with your wipers and push in for fluid. Uh, your tilting, telescoping, steering wheel, automatic function. Uh, your cruise control. This one's not equipped with Distronic, which is the radar guided cruise control, uh, which we have in our ML. It'll automatically keep the same amount of distance. But this will just, it's just like normal cruise control in any car. On this side you have your uh, gear selector. So you push down for park. You might have just seen what I did. Up for reverse. This one is not equipped with a rear view camera, which is kind of strange. Rear view camera is an option in this car. Um, but in a few years, rear view camera is going to have to be mandatory anyway, because that's going to be the law. Uh, push halfway down 
if you're in reverse or halfway up if you're in drive for neutral and push this button in for park. Uh, when you're in drive, if you touch one of the paddles, it'll also just go into manual mode. So that's how you do that.
Uh, if we go through the menus here real quick, uh, all is up and down, okay. This is the home screen, which takes you back to this menu. And this is your back button. Let me try to get out of the glary spot here. Sorry about that, guys. All right, that seems good. So in your trip, you have miles. If this only has 1,800 miles on this courtesy car, so it's basically brand new. Uh, your range, consumption, eco display, which is cool, how much you're coasting, how much you're on the accelerator, your trip, trip, and your digital readout again. So next, if we go to navigation, it'll tell you direction of travel. If you have navigation directions put into the nav, it'll automatically uh, put that over here as well. Uh, in your radio, don't want any copyright laws, but obviously this is brand new, so it still does have satellite radio, but you can scroll through your different uh, channels or presets if you have them set. Uh, media, you can connect through Bluetooth audio, you have two USB inputs, you have an auxiliary input, I believe you can put an SD card in here as well. Uh, six CD changer, I think, or one CD changer, uh, I think it's six, but you have plenty of different uh, options for media. Uh, telephone, obviously you can connect your telephone via Bluetooth. Assistance graphic, um, down here these little gray areas on either side, that'll be green because this does have the lane keep assist, uh, as well as blind spot. Um, you can see that triangle right there, hopefully. It's more visible in person, but I'm trying to get it to focus. But anyway, there's a triangle on the mirrors. Oh, that's good. You can see at the bottom right of the mirror, that'll be yellow if you're driving under 20 miles an hour. And if somebody's in your blind spot when you're driving above 20 miles an hour, it'll be red. If you put your turn signal on, it'll uh, give an acoustic warning and it'll start flashing. Uh, if you scroll down, this is a tension assist. It can actively monitor whether if you're feeling sleepy or whatnot. Um, in the ML, um, my dad was driving on a long trip or something and it was like two in the morning. He was driving back very sleepily. The car actually started beeping at him constantly telling him to pull over and take a break. Um, so it does actually work. I've just noticed it does take a little while for it to realize it, but I guess it wants to be sure. Like if we go back, you have your service, it'll tell you if you have any messages, your tire pressure system, and uh, the next service you should have. Uh, settings, you know, your ESP on or off, uh, your different things you could turn on and off, collision prevention, blind spot assist, attention assist. Uh, your lights, you can turn on or off your daytime running lights, your instrument cluster, you know, you could change that. And factory settings, and that's about it for here. Um, another thing which is probably my favorite part about the C-Class is this agility button. If you scroll up and down, you can change the different drive modes that you're in which is very cool. So it automatically starts up in comfort. It'll also give you the, um, the which one you're in over here. So right now we're in comfort. If we go to eco, the engine is in eco, the steering's in comfort, auto start stop is on, and the air conditioning is on eco. If we go up to sport, everything becomes sport, and sport plus, which is everything that I drive it on, I only like sport plus, um, and then individual. You can adjust it individually so using this button here if you click enter to adjust uh, you can change your engine you know whether you want comfort eco manual oh, we'll go on manual and then uh, oops exit out of it and then uh, like I said uh, you know your steering you can adjust to sport Sorry about that, press enter, okay, your engine, hmm. that's interesting, it's kind of, hmm, that's weird, it just had a glitch, usually you're able to scroll through the categories, uh, I don't know why that 
this is not working, but you get the gist. You can change the steering between sport and comfort. You can change the air conditioning between eco and comfort, and you can change uh, the um, the sorry the uh, auto start stop on or off. There's also a button here to turn it on or off, whether you want it on or off or not. So that's that's basically it for that. Um, Oh, you also have heated seats, I forgot to mention. They heat up pretty quickly. Uh, here's your climate control settings. It'll automatically show down here, but if you press this menu up or down, it'll show this, and the color of the air conditioning will actually change depending on what air conditioning you have on it. Uh, your different zones. I'm sorry about the glare, guys. Uh, your fan speed. Your auto, max, and your menu, rear, defrost. You can synchronize both sides. Recycling, air conditioning, and the te temperature for that. Um, I kind of, a lot of people had controversy about this, about this screen. I kind of do like it, I do have to say. Um, I don't know, I just kind of like having a screen there. They're also The G-Class also has it like that, which is where it started from. Um, maximize interior space. And so that they don't have to have the dashboard as high up, because then you would have to build the dashboard around the navigation. I kind of like it like this. Uh, you have fighter jet inspired, aeronautical inspired events. You have this waterfall flowing um, center console, which is very nice. In here you have uh, two cup holders and a little ashtray back here as well. Uh, I've noticed if you have two cups in here, there really is no place to put your phone or any other uh, thing that you might have in your pockets that you want to take out. There isn't much room back here to put anything. Uh, so most of the time you have to put in your center console. In the center console you have two USB and your SD input, if you can see that there. You just push this button to open it. Um, here you have your navigation. If you press that, it shows you on a map. Then you can go to your radio or your media and everything. Stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Your telephone, then your vehicle settings. So the cool thing is about the command center is you don't have to use the scrolly dial that's common in all Mercedes. I knew you had new thing is you had this touchpad. You can swipe between categories press in for enter you have back pop-up menu and your favorites button so um, for some reason when I did the agility select before it um, didn't work but I was just reading the categories wrong so here you have your engine if you press in you can switch between manual mode <coughs> sport plus mode sport mode comfort mode or eco mode Let's put it in manual mode. Steering, you can have sport or comfort. So that's pretty basic there. Your climate control, you can have comfort or eco. So that's that. And for your auto start stop, you can have it on or off. Either one. I prefer off. Okay, so after you go that, you can swipe it this way. And it'll take you into a different category. Uh, this one is named consumption. This just shows you uh, how much miles per gallon you've been getting in the past 0, 5, 10, 15 minutes. So that's that. Uh, you have an operator manual on here, the time, and back to vehicle settings. In vehicle settings, you know, acoustic lock feedback when it, it'll honk when it locks. Um, the belt adjustment will automatically tighten when you buckle your seatbelt to make sure you're secured. Uh, the mirrors will automatically fold when you're parked. Uh, when you lock or unlock it, the lights will turn on and off. And you can also notice it does have e a graphic for each category, which is uh, pretty cool. Locator lighting and uh, automatic locking. Once you start driving away, it'll automatically lock the doors. Interior light delayed switch. When you close the door and lock it, um, the interior lights will... Uh, go on a delayed shut off. Uh, your exterior lighting delay, same thing as interior. Easier entry exit, which is uh, 
um, basically the, like I was saying it, uh, earlier, the keyless entry. Now every time you want to get into, you know, if you want to have those categories at the top and bottom, all you have to do is swipe down. So I swipe down, the categories come up, system settings, time, display off, and you can do that. So if we go into navigation, you know, you have your map, uh, you can input your destination, you know, your position, your traffic, and your different options. Alright, um, this is your main menu. I actually don't know how I got to this for some reason. Um, okay, if you press, I'm still learning this too, it's kind of a new interface for me as well. So if you press this middle button here, it'll just pop up your music uh, settings and then you can go left and right by swiping um, to, you know, change the station. Um, you can also click on your settings down here. I just figured that out now by doing this. And you can increase it um, by obviously swiping up and down. I've been doing and clicking for enter. So this is uh, new to me. I didn't know you could highlight over these. Um, in a way, I sort of don't know what I'm doing right now. Um, so this is the climate control settings. I went to this before, but I forgot to mention you can also swipe between temperature, airflow, distribution, stuff like that. So your distribution is your different zones, uh, your airflow is your fan speed, and then back to temperature. So, uh, where was I before this? Um, let's see. Radio, went over that. Uh, So, I was in the settings, so let's press the car button back to the settings. Okay, now uh, the menu that you saw earlier that had navigation, you know, stuff like that, I actually don't know how I got there. Actually, if somebody knows how I got there, then you could help me out, that'd actually be great. Um, I, uh, I don't know how I got there. But anyway, I was going over your nav options. And you have your radio, which we went over. Uh, different category, you can search, band, preset info, sound. Now this has the Burmester sound system, so you can see the sound adjustments are different. They have a, you know, usually it would just be, if you look in my ML video tour, it'll just be like a, um, sort of like a, just a list of up and down is higher, six plus seven plus eight. Uh, I, I don't know how to phrase it, but it would be like that. Here it's actually a different cool. There are actually dials for each thing. And you can adjust mid-tones, usually, and otherwise you can only adjust treble and bass. Uh, so that's a cool thing. Uh, you have equalizer. You can turn on or off your surround sound. Change it to all seats, front seats or rear seats. Uh, your balance and fader. And back to your equalizer. Okay, so we have that. Uh, then the same thing in your media, you know, various things. Uh, in the telephone, you can search for things. Um, actually, let me connect my device. I'm actually filming with a different phone now because this is my phone and uh, it ran out of space. Uh, 64 gig iPhone 6. It ran, I don't have any space left on it. So... So if we go into settings, you know, Bluetooth, turn it on, or you could just obviously do it from the control center down here as well. Um, let's see, so one of them is those two, so from here we'll do connect device, um, and we'll click my phone, which is connecting to, and it already connected. So now when we hit the telephone button, uh, gives you different categories as well. So go phone, and you can dial numbers, 
you can look for a name or a cool thing is uh, using this touchpad you can actually write on it so if we click this let's say we do I don't know we could do 718 which is uh, uh, Staten Island New York area code I just know that so type uh, 7 7 1 1 and it'll read back to you as well which is kind of cool 8 8 and even if it's really bad it still recognizes so let's see like 3 3 that's barely a 3 Five. So it, that's actually what I wanted to write. I wanted to write five, and it, it recognized it, which is a, uh, which is good. B. And if you type something incorrect, it'll give you that a little acoustic warning that it's not acceptable. But it still recognizes the letter, which is a uh, kind of cool. Uh, let me let's see if it works with double digits. So eleven. H. Okay. I see. It, it doesn't do it with double digits. So you actually have to do one digit at a time. Or you can obviously just use this scroll thing and just roll the numbers and press enter and stuff like that. And if you press back, sorry, okay, so this is new to me as well. Apparently you can't do backspace, okay, yeah, you just have to press the clear button. Uh, the back button here or here does not actually do backspace, so you have to press that button to clear it. So that's cool, and uh, you know you have your different things you could uh, scroll through. All right. Um, and this will switch between your two uh, recent menus, whatever you were in. Uh, yeah, that's basically it for here. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of more features in this navigation that I haven't gone over just because I don't know what they are or just don't know how to work them. Uh, but there's the Mercedes is endless, uh, you know, different categories in their navigation system nowadays. It really is uh, pretty astonishing. Up here, you have your handlebar. Uh, visor with light up there, LED. Uh, your mirror, garage home link. Um, here you have sunglass holder, uh, book lamps which are underneath the mirror. Uh, your vehicle light, your main lighting, which is this here. Very nice lighting. Um, now you do have a panoramic sunroof here, which is pretty cool. You have this main sunroof part that opens, and then you also have a little sunroof part back there as well. So to close the shade, it's all it worked with one control. Just push it down once. It's a cloth shade. The front and back shade will close at the same time. Uh, you push it once back. <laughs> opens the shade. Push it once back once more. It'll open it and notice you want, when it opens fully, the shade will come forward to cover that part in case you didn't want that open. And then just press it back once more and the shade will go back all the way. Press it forward to close and then you'll notice it'll also pull it down and then press it another time to close the shade again. Front and rear. So that's pretty good. Um, I'll actually go ahead and uh, move on to the rear now. You may have noticed that uh, it's a different time than when I the video started. It's I had to go somewhere in between, so uh, this is actually a few hours later. Um, but yeah, when you open the door, you can actually see the different you know things that are made in the vent. You have this aluminum part here, plastic looking aluminum part. Then you actually have another lighter plastic aluminum looking part then you have I think this is just black plastic uh, around the outside and then you have this aluminum part here with the black actual vents there's a lot of different details to it and this is to open and close it so that's kind of neat anyway we'll go ahead and check out the rear
We also do have the Burmester sound system speakers in the doors as well. Now I'm about, uh, let's say, 5'10". Um, that's my seating position in the front. I do actually usually sit generally pretty far back than what most people would. Um, I've got, let's see, if I put my feet, I can put my feet underneath. I've got a very good amount of uh, knee space. Was that like three inches maybe? Um, because this, the way the seat is curved, it allows for more knee space. Although my uh, lower calves are touching at the bottom here, but it's very soft leather. You also do have a little storage compartment in here as well. Um, head space to the actual roof part, I have about this much, which is about an inch. Um, obviously, in the cutout of this area for the sunroof, panoramic sunroof, I have like uh, four inches or so. When it's closed, when it's open, it'll probably be another one or two inches. I also do have vents back here as well, which are pretty cool. And here you have a 12 volt power outlet, an ashtray. Um, in the center compartment, no trunk pass through. I believe that's an option, or it may not be, I'm not sure. You open this. You have a little storage compartment here, which is very handy. Cup holders you push out. And they don't pop out like they used to anymore, but if you put a cup in here, you know, this will push down and then it will automatically pop out as well with the force of the cup. Uh, it expands pretty large. You can fit, it looks like a pretty big Gatorade bottle in there, which are generally pretty big bottles. But yeah, the seats are very comfortable. I like the design of them. Uh, they give it a little sporty look to it while still maintaining a lot of a luxury feel. There's that beautiful waterfall dash. We'll go ahead and check out the trunk real quick. Uh, one thing uh, just before we move on to the trunk that I've noticed in a lot of Mercedes, including the ML, it's very, um, it's not hard to get into, but I think it's harder than other manufacturers because the way the door opens, you have this big, um, you know, this part of the panel here, the rear quarter panel that protrudes forward. The, because the doors are very thick and this slopes down, you only really have this much of the space to get into. And say if you're in a tight parking spot, it's very hard to maneuver in between this lar pretty, pretty large door and this rear quarter panel. You kind of sort of have to like squeeze into there, which could be annoying. Uh, it's not the worst entry. Um, you have a button there to release the trunk. Uh, it's decently spaced out for you know car this size. Uh, reflective vests, uh, extra cargo net under here. Uh, this does not have a spare. Instead, this just has extra cargo room. They might have taken it out because it's a rental car, I'm not sure. But this is not a power trunk, it's just manual closing. Fuel cap here, where your tire pressure should be at. Uh, same thing on this side, I don't really need to hop in. Uh, you know, one touch automatic windows. Sorry, that was out of focus. You know, like I mentioned before, the doors feel very solid. Even though they cut down a lot of weight in this car, the, I don't know, maybe it was something with the hinges or something that they put, or seals, it feels very solid. You know, same, uh, same controls, really. You also do have lumbar, I forgot to mention that. On the driver's side, aluminum door sills. Very nice interior. Uh, here's your glove box. It's not uh, not that big, really. Uh, you can lock your trunk. 
you know, in case like you give it to a valet, you don't want them opening the trunk. It's a pretty deep glove box, um, but it's, you know, the opening is, I'm surprised, this is the first time I've opened a glove box, the opening's not that big. You only have this much of an opening. Uh, that's just because the way this is shaped, because this comes up. Overall, it's a very nice car. One thing that I didn't show before are the tire pressure sensors because uh, we hadn't driven them, but now that we just came back from driving, I can uh, show you. The display is kind of different uh, than what you would think. Um, uh, let's see which kind of Sometimes it's a little difficult to go in between categories. There we go. Oops. So, I think it could be a little bit more difficult to understand which tire is which. Um, okay. That was just a message that came up because I moved in my in the passenger seat. Uh, I think it's better to have a conventional display which shows a top-down view of the car. Um, here, it kind of, you know, the orientation could confuse it a little bit on which tire is actually which, um, but. Uh, it's not that bad, and then if you scroll down, you could use the pressures as new ones, so. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, you can see now the headlights here because I'm using a, a different phone because mine ran out of space. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was just my phone that was doing that to the headlights or something. The horn is actually pretty loud for a car. The size, you wouldn't expect it. Uh, usually the horn is proportionate to the size of the car, but it's pretty loud in here. Alright, well, you n could have noticed I turned the car around. Um, obviously, like I said, you could lock it from here as well. Unlock it. Well, guys, I just, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was kind of, I don't know, maybe it didn't flow as well uh, because I had that like couple hour break in the middle. So if you'll notice that, uh, like you can see the edit point. I usually try to do these videos in one take. Uh, just because it's it's easier and a lot of the times when I don't get a chance to post videos on YouTube It's because I have to edit the vehicles the videos together But if I do it in one take it's a lot faster a lot easier to upload, but uh Anyway, I'm gonna start uh, keeping up with my channel, you know I haven't been doing many videos because school has been a uh, very busy lately, but uh, it should start cooling down now a little bit uh, the workload, but anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and uh I hope to see you on the next one.